as you begin to go deeper with God, the demands will make you more scarce. If you can appear on Instagram every day, you don't have any job. You lost your calling. I was doing a study of our fathers. I mean, people like uh, the, the man of CSC, right? Those intercessors of those days. I got a few people that know them. Those guys were not available. Those guys were sucked into God full time. They only showed up seasonally. And when time they showed up, it was God that showed up. As you go deeper with him, he will demand that you get sucked in. So you will not have time to be appearing every day. If you can be that common, it means you've lost your calling. Because the more your calling grows, the more your consecration to hide yourself will be increasing. You become more rare. You become more difficult to see on the street. Sometimes it takes courage to come out, to come and do teachings in the evening. Because I have not finished. The rest you have not finished. The study you have not finished. The prayer you have not finished. So how can I be on Facebook every day? That's why divine direction is cast. When the average minister of the gospel hits prosperity, they think that that is the calling. They don't know that God and mammon can, can fight for your attention. But Elijah was willing to leave a place where he had prospered. To go with God in another direction. Please help me tell your neighbor, I will go with God. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. In the commanding program, the first program was feeding program. The second program is sustenance program. I need to tell you the difference. If you are still with me, say amen. Now, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, this is my wonder. Why is God not commanding rich people? In the first case, there was no human. He didn't see any human being. He had to speak to a rabbi. I created you. Take bread and fish to my servant. Was it that there was no human being around? When the first instruction expired, it was now a widow. I have commanded. A widow woman go to Zarephath. That be, can you see direction that belonged to Zidon? Your commanded blessings are not on the streets. You can locate it by divine direction. Are you there? This aspect of divine prosperity is on the divine side. And no matter how we teach you divine prosperity. On the human side and you become an expert of prosperity on the human side and you don't understand the dynamics of prosperity on the divine side you will still miss out on the harvest and that's why in the teaching we want to bring the issues in the sequence of priority divine prosperity cannot be dissociated from divine direction you know the bible says that the lord is my shepherd i shall not want. The question we need to ask now is, is he your shepherd? Has he been leading you on other matters before? Have you sought guidance from him on other matters? Is it in your nature to always seek guidance from him before you take a decision, before you take a move? Is that how your life has been structured? If your life is not structured that way and you are faced with a situation that is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit that obviously suggests that you need the help of God, you are not likely to be able to secure that help because you don't know how. You've not been seeking him for guidance previously. Now, the, my emphasis this evening is to critically look at the directives that God gave Elijah in order to help him survive the situation of famine that was obviously coming to hit the land on the account of a prophetic word that he gave. He was responsible for the famine. His utterance was going to seal the heavens. And according to that utterance, until he shows up again, 
to open the heavens, the heavens will not open. The kings of the lands are at liberty to go and consult priests, altars, and deities in attempting to open up the heavens, and it will come to futility. Because he said there will be no rain, and when the rain is to be restored, it will still be according to my word. Don't think that spiritual people don't plan. We, we even plan more. We plan more because we are sure of the direction we have received. A lot in the life of a believer depends on his ability to receive direction from God. So he commanded ravens, and these ravens, because of the commandment, they were prayed contrary to their natural nature in keeping with the commandment. But you see, I told you that the commanded blessing is in two pro, two. Fold. The first aspect of the commanded blessings is what we call a feeding program. I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. Are you there? Okay. So in the feeding program, there are rations. And in this particular case, there were two rations. Ration in the morning. And the ration water. Stay with me. Let's go on. Second scripture, First Kings chapter 17, beginning from verse 8. Let's do 7 first so that you get the context. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. See, God doesn't want you to make a God out of the direction he gave you. So, even the directives of God, the directives of God, the wisdom of God, the directions he gives has expiry date. So it came to pass that the brook dried up. As the brook was drying up, the prophet began to press more to find out what the next strategy will be. You can be operating a wisdom plan which is based on the directives of God and then that plan begins to expire. The flexibility to launch into seeking God again for the next strategy that flexibility is what is lacking in many of us, especially in ministry. You are doing something and the thing is prospering. You are doing something and it is producing results. You are doing something and it is moving. It will not move forever. If what you are building is the kingdom of God, a time will come where God will give another directive that is superior to this previous one. And for many preachers, because the old directive produced finances, results, uh, they are no longer willing to continue following God. So, they stop becoming ministers. They become administrators. They stop becoming minister, ministration. They now start doing administration. I've seen many people, especially in these days of social media, if you stay on social media for long and you're getting likes and getting views, you can make money. But I've seen people on social media that have left their calling to remain on social media. Doing what they were not called to do. Because at the end of the day, you put an, uh, a, a bank account there, and if there are 2,800 people that came, maybe 300 people might put something in the bank account. And it is daily. They say, hey, money did this thing. Up. And they don't ask themselves, how long will I continue this? Until I'm 95. The revelations of God are progressive. And the reason why it is like that, the directives of God are progressive. The reason why it's like that, because God wants to separate the people that are following him from the people that want to follow things. Unfortunately, our generation has chosen things as a better God than our God. Get the hands and turn the eastward. I remember those days when I was under training in the hand of the Holy Ghost, teaching me divine direction. They say, early in the morning, wake up from your house. It was a Saturday morning. So those were the days I, I used to work at this depot here. So we don't go to work on Saturday. After the night vigil we do in the night, we stop by 3 a.m. Everybody goes to sleep. Woke up that morning. He says, rise up. I was living in Wandata then. He says, move. 
So I put my sandals on and I began to move because he said move. And I moved, I walked, walk, 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 walk beyond the bus stop and I began to go. He said, stop now and take a bus. Now, I should have taken the bus at the bus stop. But he said, stop now and take a bus. So I now flag the bus down and enter. Then we, we got to Wadata. What, what, Wuruku. He said, drop. Then one man and drop. I dropped first the man and drop. He said, this man is the man I sent you to. Said, okay, what am I going to tell you? He said, start a discussion with him. I was able to engage him, I was open, and we began to discuss, began to discuss, began to discuss. And then, it was during the discussion, he now opened my eyes to see that the man's wife was bedridden. I told him. And he began to weep. And he started to weep. So now I've communicated the message. The man... I have left the man in a worse state than how I met him. Why did you give me this information for this? This man was doing better than, than now. At least he was not crying. Now he's crying. You, you brought me here to make somebody cry. Then he waited for a while and told me that the reason why I revealed it is because I want to heal her. I just want you to be part of the matter. It's an honor to serve God. You, don't, you are not doing bringing anything on the table. You are not bringing anything on the table. If somebody gets healed, you brought nothing. So I told him that your wife will be healed. The message of divine prosperity will be a lie if the people that are being taught are not taught the way to receive guidance. Prosperity is not a function. Oh my God. Uh, we were here. What conference was that? We had a conference not too long ago. Yeah, our first contact of the year. And a shrewd businessman from one of the countries in Europe came for the first contact, the prophetic verses. Secured audience to see me in the office and I. I obliged him. He sat down. Then he gave me an insight into some of the businesses that they have done, he has done. Now, you know, my competence is in the area of the oil industry, and we value things in dollars in that industry. So when you are talking Naira, we don't understand what it means. When you start talking dollars, I think you are making sense. This guy began to unfold the kind of businesses that I'm talking about international business. The guy we are talking about is highly competent, highly highly competent, highly vast in international business economics. So, as he was talking, I decided to pay attention. Now, the groundwork or the architecture of the business is perfect. Are you there? So, on paper, after the whole analysis, there is no way the thing will fail. That business failed. That business did not only fail, he plunged this young man into debt. And while we were discussing, he now brought another business that a contract that he won, and he put it on the table. And when, in this contract we are talking about, the figures are not good for us to mention on, plat on the platform. They are, the figures are an abomination for human beings too. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm talking about. I told him, I said, you know what? Because there was no reason for that business to fail. It was well structured and there was sufficient allowance that was made for error. That means the buffers were in place. Are you there? Okay. If we have a commodity that we, that people buy every time, like crude oil, people buy it every time, like Credit, credit for your phone. People buy it every time. Are you there? Oh, you are not with me. Because you are not with me, I, let's, let's talk about that. I'm trying to make you understand things. It's not only the Bible we know. It's not only the Bible we study. We study other things. But I'm just, you know, we don't, live, we don't exist in a vacuum. That's the reason why we study other things. Now, air tickets, people buy it every time. But you know the prices fluctuate. And the prices are relatively higher 
when you are going close to the date of the journey. That's true. Okay. So in such a situation, there are models. There are purchase models that can be developed such that you can actually come into the market, pick a ticket when it is low because there will always be people that will come to buy that same ticket. They want to make an emergency trip. The seats on the plane are taken and you took 24 tickets from that plane and bought them at the cheap rate so that you can resell them are you following me? Now, so if you have that model and you know what you are doing, we, we, there are several indicators that will show us if you know what you are doing. And then you put some allowance of error in your calculations. There is no way you can fail. There's no way you can fail. It's just like those of you that buy grains. We have a model. You buy it at this price and you are your purchase is anticipating a time that the prices will... You know what I'm talking about. There's a model that you can have. And if you operate within the allowance of that model, you can never have a loss. So I'm speaking to you from the professional perspective. We looked at... The model was perfect. It was seamless. The buffers were correct. The allowances were accurate. They were... It created atmospheres of human errors, changes in political situations, external forces, international cross-border prices, and those other variables were built into, oh my God, you need to see the beauty. It fits.